Yo. Peace and blessings. You know what it is. Imam underscore OG. Like, comment, subscribe. You know, I was, uh, I'm reflecting on the, the Mason video. You know what I'm saying? So I'm reflecting on this video as I'm editing a part of it. I'm waiting for it to compress. And I'm just thinking like, man, he need straight taking an allegiance to the enemy. You know what I'm saying? Like straight swearing an oath. Yeah. You might be watching watching right now. I want you to think about what you be doing, what you be doing, bro. Who you made an oath to. See, because the great spirit, the most high, the supreme being, one creator of all things in the heavens and the earth, my maker, your maker, he's not going to hold that oath against you if you break that oath with them demons and come on over here to the, to the light side. Your maker going to forgive you. If you continue like this, if you're blind in this life, you'll be even more astray in the next. Even more astray in the next. I'm saying that to say this. This is for everybody. This has to be unacceptable to us as a people to allow you to be amongst us, be amongst us, those who have made an allegiance to our sworn enemies. It's all in the paperwork. It's all in the documents. Like, this ain't how I feel or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it need to be known. Because I'm on my real chief sh Like, we the people, the free people, big hawking. We ain't accepting it. Welcome to Hawk School. Welcome to Hawk School. <laughs>
Wook Ni, the appointed time when the great thanksgiving of the Senecas takes place in a nine-day celebration. During this season of gratitude to the Great Spirit, the various fraternities and ceremonial associations hold sessions and a few of them give public exhibitions. Not so, however, with one whose work is all in secret and into whose chamber only those purified and loyal are admitted. So here you see they got a diagram when he stepped into the lodge. We say at length the lodge was reached behind drawn curtains. There were faint gleams of light. Four sharp knocks were given and the door opened a crack while a sentinel stepped out to examine those who craved admission. A curious passerby might have seen by a hurried glance that the form of the lodge was an oblong and that there were two altars upon one of which was placed a tray on incense and a heap of strange paraphernalia. But the door soon closed, and hours afterward, the sounds of peculiar chant, the blend of a wild forest sounds mingled with a strange rushing noise, like that of a great cataract, floated out from the walls of the lodge house. What was happening within? Is there an undiscovered masonry? So here you see the whole say diagram showing the form of the lodge of the ancient guards of the mystic potents. Seat of the invoker, fireplace, screen, guard, table. So this is pretty much the lodge. So I don't know if this is a lodge that belonged to the Indians because, you know, when I was I'm digging into the masonry, man, this should go back to like 1700s. I think it was like a mohawk. I got it written down. I'll edit it in, the information on the, the Iroquois dude or mohawk or one of them. I can't forget. But he's a traitor. Let's see, we'll read a little more. It says, when the traveler or the ethnologist returns from his journey to one of the world's out of the way places and comes again into the society of his friends and brothers, he finds that there are certain subjects that are of perennial interest, and that means men are curious to know what he has learned of them. Not the least among these subjects is Freemasonry. It is not the Freemason alone who is curious of Freemasonry. Every man who enjoys the society of his fellow men and who sees in the symbols that are found in the world about him moral lessons that admonish him to virtue see also in all the cosmos the potentialities of freemasonry thus the student who had who has penetrated the strange lands and places of earth is called upon to tell what other races and people know of mystic orders that bind men to morality and brotherly devotion in america we are asked what the native red man has of masonry and if he has signs, grips, and words like those of the ancient craft, oftentimes the question comes direct, are American Indians Masons? Rumors have long been afloat that there are tribes that have Masonic lodges and that Masons traveling amongst them have been greeted by familiar signs and words and even led into lodges where the ceremonies were conducted in due form. Okay, so basically I'm just showing and proving that this whole idea about, you know, how masonry has uh, affected you know um the what's been going on in the past with the american indian and as far as um us being sold out pretty much by the chiefs of the five civilized tribes who went and sold that paperwork and now we know uh, excuse me signed that paperwork and now we know that's because they were them were they brothers you know what i'm saying and they mind Okay, so you got in 1852, Albert Pike. Now, remember, Albert Pike is the dude who started, you know what I'm saying, the KKK, 33rd degree Mason, who just so happens to be uh, the one who started the KKK. And not only that, he's the only Confederate. He's the only Confederate. Oh, that's, that's, I got to get something out the jaw. Don't worry about that background. He's the, uh, he's the only Confederate general. With statues all in um in Washington, you know what I'm saying? Like for real, I'm starting to think he the founding father. You know what I'm saying? And and this, these people so wicked, man. But check this out. So he's supposed to be all about the tribes. You know what I'm saying? 1852, he pursued a land claim on behalf of the Creeks, 8.8 .8 million acres. You know what I'm saying? And then in 1856. Uh, he facilitated some shit with the U.S. Senate to where, um, what did it say? Uh, 
800,000 800,000 yeah 800,000 in gold was awarded to the Choctaws and Chicksaw. Pike he got a he got a $10,000 uh fee. You know what I'm saying? He was awarded 10 grand. You know what I'm saying? Now 1857 the Creeks get awarded 100 uh excuse me 800,000 and Pike gets 120,000 in gold. You know what I'm saying? So like he acting like he rocking with them but the whole time they all setting setting the nations up for a failure. You know what I'm saying? The Masonic little brotherhood niggas. So they making these deals. You know what I'm saying? He talking about, man, yeah, let's go get some money from them. You know what I mean? They splitting up the money and and leaving every and, and I mean you can look at how with how history's evolved. They left these niggas on the reservation, washed all up. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so it's saying uh during the Civil War that Pike consolidated uh, the support of the five civilized tribes. So when you see um, in history and it talks about, yeah, the Native Americans fought against the United States, and you're like, yeah, that's right. But at the same time, the British was invading us. You know what I'm saying? So when they say the United States, you got that's like the European peasants, you know what I'm saying? The African slaves, the indigenous Indians, you know what I'm saying? Like that's where the Seminoles even come from, or should I say, that's what they were composed of you know what i'm saying because y you miss out on the whole y'all forget the history of the european slaves you know what i'm saying look up uh type in irish jamaicans in youtube and go look at the european slaves who was taking the work the uh what is it the sugarcane fields or whatever y'all know what it is man but the uh king george of of england he sent the the your uh the irish over there the irish was they in barbados jamaica they still over there bro you know, you know what i'm saying they was enslaved over there you know just like uh who was it the jews was taking uh was taking slavs from austria and germany and selling them to moors in north africa you, and they had european slaves over there so you know why everybody talking this slave shit you know what i'm saying everybody people been slaves <laughs> you know what i'm saying like straight up so anyway uh i digress so then we got this nigga patrick M midges i think that's his book yeah it's a dude book i can't even i, I couldn't even understand how dude pronounced his name to look it up but anyway and um he was raised to a 33rd degree in 1860. You know what I'm saying? So they got the Choctaw, Peter Pitchton. They got Elias Boudinay. He's Cherokee. And then they got Holmes Colbert. Listen, he's Chickasaw. And all these niggas is supposed to be some traitors. They say in 1900, it was estimated 1 million Masons. And by 1930, it was a record 12% of the white population. So, you know what I'm saying? They say after World War I, 1 in 20 white males was, was Freemasons. You know what I'm saying? And here, not to go back too far, but Joseph Brandt. Look up Joseph Brandt, man. I, I might just edit this together in the video. I'm and I'm just kind of, you know what I'm saying, seeing how it goes. But um, Joseph Brandt was supposed to become a, 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 excuse me, he's supposed to be like a, a Mohawk Mason, you know, but that go back to 1865, you know what I'm saying? So I got I to gotta look into that. Um, we'll see how it goes. But let's get back into this book, man. And I wanted to go to page 10. And uh, check this out. God, you know what I'm saying? He's going to tell us what, what he's observed of the Native Americans. The red man believed a supreme deity. Many authorities have denied this, perhaps for three reasons. Confusion of terms may have led to misunderstanding. The words that the explorer translated, gods, spirits, powers, may have seemed to have precluded a supreme god, spirit, or power. But we may well believe that in some instances, at least the ignorance of the informant or of the inquirer or both led to failure, led to the failure to discover a statement of a supreme power. So now, you know, that's the plurality of God. You know what I'm saying? Like it say Elohim and they like it mean gods. It's because God is so great. You know what I'm saying? That you can't even. The ancients couldn't even describe him, you know what I'm saying? His oneness is like multitude of oneness, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if that makes sense to you, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, it says, and thirdly, he say, uh, 
He said, but we may, but we may well believe that in some instances, at least the ignorance of the informant or of the inquirer or, bo or both led to the failure to discover a statement of a supreme power. And thirdly, sad to say, in some cases, there seems to be a prejudice against admitting that natural man can know of one God in order to emphasize the degradation of the unregenerate. But through, it says, but though the native Indians spoke with spirits of nature and gods, those who were instructed by the sages of their race knew that there was one supreme spirit who governed and directed all others. Whether it was Gichi Manitaw of the Algonquin, Tara, it's a Tirawa of the Pawnee, Pawnee or the how we knew of the Iroquois, the same idea prevailed, that of one great spirit. So, you know, they baffled because these niggas ain't got no kings. They believe in one supreme creator. Who taught them this? Where did they learn this? How do they know this? See, this is why they confused because wasn't nobody writing down, writing nothing down. This was oral tradition. You know what I'm saying? This was this was strictly by word of mouth. You know what I mean? And this is what was being taught. And that's why they say even though it was so many different tribes of people over here, it was as though we were one people because there were certain foundational beliefs that we all had. And one of those was that one great spirit. You know what I'm saying? It says the Indian would would no more think of denying the existence of a supreme being than he would of disputing his own existence. You hear me? The first, pre the first presupposed the latter, and thus with the religious leaders and the initiate, the great spirit was called our creator. The great architect of the universe to the Indian was the maker of all. So, boom. One God. We got that laid down. So, I'm confident that what's been, you know what I mean, vibrating in, in, in the energy that I'm created and made of and, and what's moving through my every cell and, and, and in my DNA has been telling me the truth. One God. You know what I'm saying? He said they, the Indians would rather, what he say? He said the Indian would no more think of denying the existence of a supreme being than he would of disputing his own existence. You know what I'm talking about? So, you telling me, oh man, uh, it's, it's all these guys and up, bruh, you better off telling me I don't exist. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. And and clearly this is, my ancestors had the same, had the same drip. You know what I'm talking about? So, peace to the tribes, man. God bless the ancestors. Morality. The practice of virtue was demanded of every red man. He must be just in his dealings with his fellows, truthful, charitable, considerate. He must also be stoical, slow to anger, and slow to admit of personal discomfort. So a nigga ain't getting mad and a nigga ain't always complaining. You know what I'm saying? So he just showing you, you know, this is why they was all on our nuts for real. Cause they like, man, these people are so regal and so noble. You know what I'm saying? But ain't no, they don't have no book. Ain't nobody gave them no book to teach them this. Because they can't understand, you know what I'm saying, how, like it's saying in the book of Enoch, in the last days, the, the law shall be written on the hearts of the elect. See, it's written on our hearts, man. It's written, like I say, man, I got victory written on my soul, man. This, you, they can't get this off of us. They can't get it out of us. They want to they wanna take the sauce. They want to take the dripping, package it, and bottle it, but they can't. You know what I'm talking about? And they hate us for it. But it's all love over here at Hawk School, you know what I'm saying? Because remember, only the unloved hate, you know what I'm talking about? So if you're hating, you probably just need some love in your life. So good luck with that. <clears throat> it says, he must at all times recognize his dependence upon the maker of all and was taught to enter upon no great or important undertaking without first thanking the maker for the strength that gave him power to perform the deed he will. So, alhamdulillah, you know what I'm saying? As it says in Arabic, all praise is due to God. So, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm reading this and this sounds pretty much like what I've been taught, you know what I'm saying, in Islam. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm going to have to take this call. I'll hit y'all back in just a minute. Yo, peace and blessings.
pretty much what they talking about is a rite of passage when they saying they got these degrees. So, you know, you, you they go through these rites of passage. Um, I haven't thoroughly investigated it, you know what I'm saying, to actually speak on it. But it's rites of passages, excuse me, rites of passage as you, you know what I'm saying, you elevate in your rank, I guess, amongst the tribe, you know what I'm saying? And they look at them like degrees, you know what I'm saying? And because it's something that was only kept by oral tradition, you know, they... They're trying to soak up our, our, our drip, like I told you. Let's read on a little more and see what they got. You know, it's a short book. It's only like 36 pages, so I'm going to leave the link in the description. You can read it cover to cover. I already have once, you know what I'm saying? So, anyway, it says, What you have read in the pages that have been written was told to a great mason long before he made his journey to the land of the Senecas and was and witnessed their ceremonies. The Seneca called him Hodoin Jai. The holder of the earth, and they invited Ho Doin Jai to come as a novitate to the lodge of the ancient guards of the mystic potents. So that sounds like. Ooh, never mind. It say two other friends of the Senecas had been invited Ho Ski, Ho Squi Sao, Ho Ski, Ho Squi Sao. And Gajiwa, thus forming the mystic triangle. So I guess that's why they had the three people. Remember when we said earlier we was reading and they said he was going. It was really five of them. One was like a guide, and uh, one was like a, a guard, and then the other three were all masons. So here he explaining the five. It was, you know, what I'm saying, whoever this mason is. That's telling this story. It said, Red Hand, the brother friend. The candidates were told to listen. The legend of the ancient guards was told. The complete relation would make a lengthy, lengthy document, though I am sure that you would find it a marvelous tale. Okay, so the legend of the ancient guards. We're going to write that down. Get your pens out. You know what I'm saying? Legend of the ancient guards. And we're going to look that up. You know what I'm saying? And see what that's about. He said, Red Hand was a young chief whose life was blameless, for he was Hoya Diwado. He had received certain mysterious knowledge that made the covetous envy him. But so brave and kind was Red Hand that he was admired and loved by men and warriors. Red Hand had placed, had a place where he spoke to the Great Spirit, and because the Great Spirit spoke to him, he was kind to every brother of the earth. Every tree, every rock, every animal. He fed the hungry birds in wintertime. When the wolves were hungry, he gave them meat. When the deer were hungry, he gave them grass and moss. The children loved him because he gave them trinkets. The old people were grateful to him because he knew of oils that cured their lameness. The warriors admired him because he had power to lead them against the enemy that sought to destroy them. So, yeah, this is the story. I'm going to finish reading this story. Check this out. It say, like, down to the south country in the, o in the valley of the Ohio went a war party to punish the foe. The leader went apart to seek the chief of the enemy, and while he stood alone, a poison arrow struck him and he fell. Then the assassin who rushed upon him demanded the secret of his power, but he would not give it. So now this is going into the whole Hybram of Biff story. This, so did they steal... You know what I'm saying? Did they steal the story from us or is they just trying to tell the story to make it relate to them? I don't know, but it's the same thing. They say, then the assassin who rushed upon him demanded the secret of his power, but he would not give it. And so the enemy lifted his tomahawk and scalped our leader, taking the scalp away in triumph to be dried over the lodge poles where the smoke issues forth. They say a wolf lifted his nose and smelled blood. He howled to bring the pack and followed the scent of the body of a man. He looked and saw that it was brother friend whom he knew was Red Hand. He called in a different note and there came all the chiefs of the animals and even the chiefs of all great plants and trees. They looked at the body of their friend. Then they held a council as to how he should be revived. We will give him... We will give the tips of our hearts and the sparks of our brains, they said. Then they sent for the scalp which the dew eagle brought, making it again alive by sprinkling it from pool of dew that rests on his back. It was placed on the crown of Red, he Red Hand's head and grew fast. One by one, the greatest of created things gave up the vital parts of their beings, the tips of their hearts and the hearts of their brains. For a brother is not a friend if he will not give his life for the brother friend who has befriended him in great emergency. So now they on that Masonic shit. They say when the life sparks were reduced to dust, 
So small the quantity was there that altogether there was only enough to fill an acorn cup. Then the other chiefs of the animals and trees and plants and birds gathered around while the wolf took a cup of bark. Hold on. The other chiefs of the animals and trees, plants and birds gathered around while the wolf took a cup of bark and dipping it with the current of a spring dropped into the water three tiny grains of the dust of life. This water of life was poured into the mouth of Red Hand and he moved. A compress of the water healed his wounds then the chosen band commenced to chant the rituals of the ancient guardians of the mystic potents. So they talking about resurrecting him. The animals resurrected him. You know what I'm saying? They say, uh... During the night of blackness they sang, reciting the life and adventures of Red Hand. He awoke but lay still with his eyes shut. He listened and learned the song. The wings of the eagles lifted him and bore him to a great waterfall. He heard the rushing of strong waters thundering down upon the crags below. The whipperpool called and a light and a light floated across the dark floated over the darkness then the circle clustered closer and the brother who is the bear touched the breast of red hand all stood erect the bear grasped the hand of the leader and was to be raised though slain the bear grasped his hand and by a strong grip raised red hand to his feet all was darkness but red hand lived the ancient guards called each with his own peculiar cry red hand recognized his friends Yawano, who has passed through the initiation of the ancient guards, tells us the story of Red Hand. It is a night of darkness, impenetrable. There is no sound save the waterfall and the river. In the forest, the leader, patient and listening, is waiting for the sign promised him. Will it be given? Yes, for the birds and beasts do not lie. So, they done stole their whole shit from us. I'm going to let you finish the story and make it interesting. You know what I'm saying? Here goes some, uh, what's this say? These are forms of ceremonial and decorative brooches of silver used by the Seneca Indians. Red Jacket wore the brooch marked A. So, if the Indians was wearing this, then you already know who they stole it from. Wow. So, you had to ask, why were they wearing these? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. See? You see what they on? So, I'm, I'm going to keep this video short, man. And, uh, the description to the book will be, uh, Excuse me, the, the link to the book will be in the description. So I'm, I recommend, you know, if you want, you could go and uh, download it. You know what I'm saying? PDF from the archive. And uh, read it for yourself, man. American Indian Freemasonry. We're going to keep on searching, man. We're going to keep flying high. You know what I'm saying? So keep your eyes wide, man. And you know what it is. Imam underscore OG. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram. Like, comment, subscribe, reshare the video. Do this for us, man. Right on to the real. Wake up the nations. Peace and blessings.